Hey, Tom here from The Run Testers with another first run review. In this video, I'm going to be taking a first look at the Kraft CTM Ultra Race Rebel Shoe, a carbon plate shoe designed for, as you can expect, racing and running fast. So I'm heading out to do about 15K in it now and see how it feels. I'll report back in a bit. The Kraft CTM Ultra Carbon Race Rebel costs £220 or $249.99. It weighs in at 211 grams or 7.4 ounces and the drop is 11 millimeters. The Kraft CTM Ultra Carbon Race Rebel is a carbon plate racer built for efficiency and speed over ultra distances. Kraft even had ultra runner Tommy Ribs collaborate with them to develop the shoe. The shoe has a full length carbon fibre plate that includes something Kraft calls a precision split. It's a gap at the front of the plate to add extra torsion and variable energy return. You'll also find a healthy wedge of EVA midsole foam that Kraft calls UD Foam Pro, the material the brand says is ultra light and offers ultra high rebound. Underneath that midsole is a thin layer of rubber to protect the outsole and add grip that covers the majority of the midsole foam and the upper is made from a one piece engineered mesh. Before I start, a bit of information on the fit. They are true to size, I've got a size 8, they feel fine, but they do feel like a very generous shoe. The upper does have a lot of space in it around the midfoot and the forefoot, and it did take me a bit of time to get a nice lockdown fit. I had to tie the laces quite tight to um, get a secure fit. Uh, I'd also say that the tongue is um, it's quite loose and it's quite hard to get that into the shoe nicely. So, although they are true to size, they do take a bit of work to, to get a lockdown fit. Okay, so I just got back from my first run in the Craft Race Rebel. I'm calling it the Craft Race Rebel because I keep forgetting the full name of the shoe. Um, and that was 15k over roads, quite hilly roads, there's quite a lot of undulation. And I did it at my marathon pace, which is around... 440 minutes per kilometer um because this is an ultra shoe i wanted to test it at the pace that i would actually run an ultra at or at least a marathon what i found was that over that 15k it just feels like a very solid shoe it it's a carbon plate shoe it costs 220 pounds so instantly you're probably going to compare it with the likes of the vaporfly and the alpha fly and the metaspeed sky it's not like those shoes. It may be the same price, but it's not delivering a similar experience. Those shoes have a lot of propulsion. They bounce. They have that carbon plate is really noticeable, and it, they feel like they're propelling you forward and making you go faster. This shoe doesn't do that. I I didn't really notice the carbon plate in this shoe, um, and to be honest, it didn't feel very bouncy or propulsive for me on that 15k run. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing if you're an ultra runner you probably want something that's a bit more stable, that's gonna keep you going for longer, comfortably. And I think this shoe probably does do that. I've been doing a lot of testing recently for the Carbon X3 uh, from Hocker, and that's a shoe that I've tried previous iterations of, and it's very similar in feel to, to this shoe. That also has a carbon plate in it. That carbon plate isn't very noticeable either. So if, you, if, I'd ever, if you'd given me the Carbon X3 or given me this shoe and it hadn't told me there was a carbon plate in it, I probably would, wouldn't even think there was one in it because it's not very noticeable at all. That EVA midsole foam that sits in this shoe, again, it's not particularly bouncy. It doesn't feel that responsive. It doesn't feel uncomfortable. It feels like you could run long distances in it without it being a problem or without it feeling too hard, but it's not bouncy and propulsive like you might expect from a carbon plate racer. I definitely think that adds to the overall support and stability of the shoe. There's a really nice wide base on this shoe which works alongside that slightly firmer EVA midsole that's in it to produce a very sturdy and supportive run that doesn't feel too heavy. It still feels quite lightweight and I think that's definitely a bonus of the shoe for those runners, ultra distance runners that want something that's gonna keep their feet really sturdy in, in position when they're running. A lot of carbon plate shoes like the Vaporfly aren't particularly st sturdy and they do feel a little bit wobbly. You definitely don't get that with this shoe. It does feel like you're in firm control and that that, that wide base um, on the outsole really does 
hit the floor nicely and, 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 and hold your foot in place every time you land. I also found that at slower paces, it felt pretty good as well, which sort of fits in with that ultra running design where you're going to probably be going at a slower pace for longer. So I definitely enjoyed running in the shoe at a lower pace, more so than I often do in a lot of uh, faster race shoes, just because it felt quite sturdy and felt like my feet were quite comfortable throughout the run. One other thing that I liked about this shoe is the outsole rubber that sits there is there's there's a fairly thin layer of outsole rubber on it, um, but it does cover the majority of the midsole. There's only a very little bit of ex exposed midsole in the shoe. What I found was that I, I was running down by the sea today, um, down the coast, and it was a little bit wet. That does grip very well. It felt very in control. It felt like uh, my feet were firmly held to the ground uh, during that run. Um, and yeah, I think that's a good feature of the shoe. So my first run verdict for the Kraft Race Rebel is it's a solid shoe. It it definitely, I don't have many bad things to say about it. I just think that it's a good, sturdy, reliable, lightweight shoe that could probably do a good job when you're coming to running longer distances at a consistent pace. I definitely don't think it's a shoe that's designed for short distance fast running. So um, if you're looking at the shoe and thinking, oh, maybe that's an alternative to the racing super shoes like the Vaporfly or the Meta Speed Sky, it's it's not going to do that. I don't think it's designed for that. I don't think you're going to get an experience like those shoes. It's designed for longer distance running at a consistent pace where you are, you really want something that's sturdy, reliable, but also lightweight and lets you just run efficiently for longer. I'd say that it's actually more likely to be competing with shoes like the Carbon X uh, range from Hocker, maybe even the Rocket X from Hocker, because it just has that feel where the carbon plate isn't really noticeable. It's just there to just help with efficiency and keep you going without giving you a noticeable propulsion and bounce that you get from a lot of carbon plate super shoes like the Vaporfly and the A6 Meta Speed Sky. Um, so yeah, I think it's a shoe that is probably better suited to longer distance efficiencies. And if you're thinking about getting it instead of the Vaporfly or the Alphafly, it might not be the shoe you want. But having said that, I've only done a first run in this shoe and I've only done 15K. It's a shoe designed for ultras. I really need to run further in it to get a, a better understanding of how this shoe delivers. But for this first video, I wanted to just test how it felt over 15K and how it compared with other shoes around there at the moment that sit in the same price range. Probably the biggest thing I should mention when it comes to this shoe is the price. £220 is a lot of money for a running shoe and there's very few brands in the world that have got shoes that cost that much money. So it's going up against shoes like the Vaporfly and the Alphafly and the Asics Metaspeed Sky and to be honest I just don't think it, at the moment after my first run it should be up there with those sorts of shoes. The Carbon X range costs around £160, with the Rocket X range costing about £140. So I would say that for £220, it's a lot of money. Um, maybe I'll change my mind after doing some more testing, but my initial thoughts on the shoe is that it's probably a little bit too expensive for what it is. 